Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. What up, everybody? This is Jason Lee, and this is Hollywood Unlocked and Censored. And I'm Melissa Ford, a.k.a. The Curve Queen. It is DJ Damage. Let's get this show started so, now. Oh, sorry. That was an extension of his intro. <laughs> <laughs> if you're listening, you're definitely listening to it now on iHeart. Now that we are at iHeart Radio. Woo! Woo-hoo! I'm so excited about that. But you can also still catch us on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, and watch the show on YouTube. So this is the gratitude edition. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because first I have to say, I have to bow to my left, uh, the queen of Hollywood Unlocked, Melissa Ford. You're so sweet. Well, we, we, you know, we started. Okay, so for those of you tuning in, why we're hoo-hoo and hee-heen. Okay, we've recently announced our our new deal with Mm iHeartMedia where this little shitty little show (laughs) (laughs) that was just a mess and has gone through some changes has now made it over to iHeart where you actually have been. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You've been at iHeart. Working at iHeart for the past three years. Mm -hmm. So um, this is a show where really I wanted to just say to the fans, you know, we'll get into some hot topics, but we really could not have done this show without you. We sit in this room, the three of us. There's Kelvin in the back who typically gives us a bunch of bullshit to talk about. (laughs) And Adam, the lone man (laughs) behind the camera. Lone wolf. Uh, But we are a small team who created something about three years ago. Mm-hmm. I called Melissa up and I said, hey, I want to start this podcast. She was moving to L.A. And uh, I called her up and I said, hey, you want to do this podcast? And I was like, absolutely. Like I I had gone through something so horrific in my professional and personal life. Um, I just needed I was running from New York. I needed to get away and I needed to do something that was going to make me happy. Radio makes me happy. And just being able to, you know, do something with a close personal friend of mine that didn't resemble work. It just it was awesome. Like it was the greatest (laughs) thing to come to L.A. to start doing. And then for it to have picked up and taken off like a shot. Like, God, it's so it's rewarding. It It really is. No, I was wondering, like, you, you said you were running away from something in New York or getting away. What Was that already discussed? What happened? Uh, well, remember, she was on Blood, Sweat, and Hills, and had yeah, gone yeah. through that whole dramatic uh, situation oh, you're talking with about, that as girl. As far as that show, yeah. And, yeah. and then moving back from, from moving to L.A. from the East Coast is a big move. I mean, yeah. you're, you're, you're not only changing your lifestyle or your life. Living in New York is a whole experience. Then yeah. you come to LA, which is great. You've always loved LA, but yeah, and I lived and I lived here before. You know, I've done the move back and forth from New York to LA a c- couple of times. Um, but the you know this time I knew was permanent. I knew that my time in New York was over mm-hmm. um, for several reasons. It just wasn't the city that I'd moved to back in two thousand. Like the, when it, that was that shit was amazing. Now New York is like a dirty Disneyland. You know, it's like. <laughs> It I is. love it. It is. I mean, like, it's. it just doesn't have the same energy it used to have. You know, I mean, like, people, I remember when Bushwick was scary. Now they call it East Williamsburg. Yeah. Fuck out of here, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And shit's a million dollars over there. It's just not the same city. And I was like, I need, I, I, I need to start. I don't know my new my next lifetime. So L.A. was it. So for the new fans who are listening. So we started this show early on. We didn't know how to make money. We weren't making money. We uh, well, you know, she looked like a slump the first day. I did. And then she turned it completely <laughs> around. And I've just remained a slump. But what I loved Uh-oh. about it was, you know, we we didn't think about metrics. We didn't think about ratings we just said we're gonna get together and talk about all the crazy shit we talk about in private Mm -hmm. we're gonna put it on the air Mm -hmm. and hopefully we don't have no marketing plan we had no producer we had one cameraman we had our computers and our phones and we we didn't even have notes when we first started we just started talking (laughs) and calling friends and you know to Lunell who was our first guest and Matt Barnes and Tank Mm -hmm. and Cardi and Amber Rose and Floyd and uh, Tiffany Haddish. I mean, we've had so many guests, but also the Uber driver who had the homeless man who <laughs> yeah. died. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, and the preacher who showed people how to suck dick. Yeah. This show has been a crazy ride. Yeah. And I know that, you know, sometimes my antics are a lot. Yeah. And I come in here and say some crazy shit, but I want to break something down so people could just be educated. First, I open <laughs> it all up by saying thank you. Humbly thank you. 
thanking you for making our dreams come true. Yeah. You know, um, and we'll get to damage him because he was a late addition, but an important part, a missing part of the of the whole thing. Yeah, I agree with that. I the, agree with that. The craziness that, you know, my role on the show is just to talk shit mm -hmm. because that's what I do. No way. Yes. That's what you do? You're I a mean, shrinking violet. What are you talking about? Oh, yeah. Speaking of shrinking violet, <laughs> what I tell you, ain't nothing shrunk on me. But, you know, I mean, I, you get to a place where, I look at mm -hmm. pop culture and I'm like, man, why ain't nobody said that? Mm -hmm. Why ain't nobody pointed this out? And I realized that the industry is like this country club, right? Where everybody protects everybody's interest until you fuck up and then they all just shit on you mm -hmm. like they never knew you were mm -hmm. fucked up. Mm -hmm. Shout out to R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. um, and so I said, no, we're going to create a space where we're just going to say it like it is and it's going to be uncensored and we've had a wild ride. That's my role. Yeah. Melissa, your role. What was what, your role, Ben? I would say the queen. I would as the as the, the curve queen. Yeah, as the you know what I was just watching the episode where we had Laz Alonzo on and he goes on to talk about Melissa being me being the curve queen. Mm -hmm. Oh, she can curve a motherfucker. She will curve the fuck out of you. Yeah, I mean it's an art form, you know. Um, but the lone female host. Um, I mean, I have to offer a balance, which mm -hmm. is what women primarily do. You know, they find that they occupy that role in their lives, you know, with work and kids and husbands and friends and that sort of thing. So I offer a balance and I also have to be a, I feel like I'm a representative for the battle tested, unapologetic, you know, woman who wants to live her life on her terms. Mm -hmm. And I'm also an, a source of inspiration for younger girls who are still trying to find their way and figure out who they are and who they want to be. And there's a lack of, you know, f you know, visible mentorship around. I feel like it is part of my responsibility. I've, I've always been one of those people that felt like if I am visible, and people pay attention to me, I have a certain amount of responsibility to them in order to, you know, live with dignity, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and show young girls, you know, what you can aspire to be. And I'm also the fact checker, motherfuckers. And I like to use the word fuck. And That's she smokes weed. weed. <laughs> and I smoke a lot of weed. And then here comes DJ Damage. So, smoke weed every day. Hey. You know what's so crazy is when I used to live downtown, I had a, a an in it. It's gonna sound so bougie. I had an adjacent penthouse. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. You came to my place downtown. Yeah, yeah I, I know. Had, it was really nice. I, I had an adjacent penthouse. I sound so fucking bougie. I really am from the hood. Y'all go figure that out with season <laughs> six of Love Hip Hop. But uh, I used to have a TV in my office, and I used to watch Revolt every day. Re believe it or not, in my office, Revolt was on all our monitors because I loved the new set. I had yeah. went to the opening. I had saw all the celebrity power that you guys had in there. And the, you know, I saw you, Sibley, you know, hosting Revolt. And you know, I've, I always wanted to have my own talk show. I always wanted to be able to stand up and have the confidence to mm -hmm. talk. That's the other reason why I think, you know, this works because mm -hmm. people see me and say, damn, he crazy, he wild, he this and that. I really am mm. a shy person. When it comes to having a one on one, like I know I'm about to go into your business conversation. Yeah. I really won't. I won't look you in the eyes. Mm. Um, I just I, confrontation doesn't. I'm not really comfortable with it. Now, I'm not comfortable with confrontation. No, wait. Listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen. I mean, if I am confronted, <laughs> I can deal with it, but I don't like to start a confrontation. Yeah. Okay. Like I'm my best when I'm provoked, okay. right? You come for me, oh, it's good, I got you. Okay. But to go and say, you know, I know I gotta ask you a question, that's gonna be uncomfortable. That shit one-on-one, -on -one, I'm not the most comfortable. At least early on, earlier on in my career I was. I mm. remember my first uh, photo, a uh, video interview with Adam and them, I had mm. to drink. Like we used to drink too on the Ooh. show, but I had to drink. What happened to that? Wait, I had to drink several shots to be able to even have the conversation. But anyway, I digress. Mm -hmm. DJ Damage. So I will say, leading. This is why people have to trust in God. And I'm and I'm sorry. Shout out to Karen Clark Sheard, who I talked to before I came here today. She's somebody I listen to every day. Yes, you do. You have to trust God's timing, right? When I first started Hollywood Unlocked, I was out here in the streets. I was drinking like crazy. <laughs> and every episode in the early days, there was a different little, there was a different nigga sitting in the background. <laughs> Do you remember those mm -hmm, days? Mm -hmm. Now they're not allowed to be on camera anymore, but, and they ain't even really here, but I, I'm just saying like, I was out, I was enjoying the wildness Living. of, well, I was just traveling and, you know, on TV and all in it and Hollywood Unlocked was my baby. You know, as you watch your baby walk, mm -hmm. then you watch your baby 
go to school for the first day. Like Hollywood Unlocked was my baby that I watched grow from from nothing, right? Mm-hmm. So we had a lot going on up here with changes in that chair. Mm-hmm. Not to discredit anybody that came before you did, mm-hmm. but we always had the vision of this show getting a national platform, getting on television, touring, you know, when we really got in the heart mm-hmm. of the work, when we saw interviews like Jennifer Lewis and talking about bipolar disorder and, you know, this was Melissa crying, talking about wanting to write a book and tell her story, then getting in a near death accident and, yeah. you know, now back really motivated to tell that story and, you know, us all ev- evolving as individuals. We needed that, that there was a missing link to really, I think, elevate the show where we could still have the wild stuff, but then we do have to have a brand that can get to a place where real partners can elevate our voices, right? Mm. I've had a lot of time to really look back over my journey here, and I feel like had I stayed distracted, I'm not blaming the third chair, I'm just saying had I stayed distracted and wanting to have the wow factor all the time, we wouldn't have got to a place where we are right now Mm -hmm. to where we can actually partner with reputable people to help us elevate our voice, right? A lot of stuff had to happen. I mean, like I'm I'm still reconciling my accident and, you know, when something like that happens, you think about why. You think was this God's will and why was it God's will, you know, for the accident to happen, for me to be saved. Like I'm still going through my own my own process of, you know, reconciliation and as to the why's and stuff like that. But, you know, that even served you know, our relationship in a certain way because it helped. Sometimes you have to break something apart in order to put it back together Mm -hmm. type thing, you know? And without going into further detail, it's almost like that needed to happen. It's almost like, you know, the the chaos, it almost had to break apart in Mm -hmm. order to put it back together Mm -hmm. in a more solid way, Mm -hmm. you know? And I... That's that's just what I've been constantly thinking about ever since I knew that the deal was, you know, right around the corner and and then it's signed and it's kind of like, you know, to see it come to fruition. I I'm I'm proud. <laughs> like, I'm so proud. I'm pr- I'm proud of myself. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of us. I'm proud of our fans. I'm I'm just so proud. We have a thing, mm-hmm. man. Like we have a thing. And damage having watched you on Revolt and grow there, then go over to ninety two point three, which is an iHeart station here in Los Angeles, mm-hmm. uh, to come from Philly Radio to have history and a vision for yourself in radio and to be able to like. Number one, come in the middle of a storm. Mm. <laughs> that motherfucking tide was turning because, you know, when you were gone, we had April Jones. April, beautiful girl, great mom. She loves her kids. She has a nice voice. Mm-hmm. She's going to do well for herself. This just wasn't right for her. Mm-hmm. And it is what it is. You know, and people will watch that play out over the season of Love and Hip Hop, uh, Hollywood. But you came into a storm, you came into fans you know liking who else filled that chair who was also your friend yeah yeah um who who actually brought you into the show to mm-hmm. fill in and you just felt right you're smart you know and this is not discrediting anybody else you know you're you're smart you you're a great father and you were at iheart so it was just god's timing and everything really working but um yeah your right has been an interesting one no super interesting like i said like <laughs> I, i'm coming from philadelphia never did tv before when i was doing revolt you was watching me literally for the first time ever perform those kind of acts and you know it's always been a dream coming up in radio to do radio in a bigger market philly is a huge market mm. number seven and number eight you know out of all 55 markets mm. but you want to be in new york you want to be in la came here was able to be on radio in LA, but podcasting is the future. Mm-hmm. So when Jason reached out to me saying, you know, I want you to be a part of the podcast, I was thrilled because you always want to be on the pulse of the next thing. Mm-hmm. And I felt, I watched the show a few times when I guest hosted um, with Jason a few times, you weren't there. Mm-hmm. I knew this was the, the thing. I'm like, podcasting is the thing. You have somebody like Jason who's beyond organic. Like you, I just felt the right thing was happening. And I feel like anybody that's going through their journey you know how older people tell you to be patient and you don't mm-hmm. want to hear that shit? You have yeah. to be patient because every one of us dealt with something that really broke and came back together to make this happen. 100%. It's a really powerful moment. Tell your moment. story. I can tell my story? Yeah, of course. So <laughs> <laughs> I met Jason, We, you know, going to hookah and everything, mm-hmm. but literally 
almost over a year ago, I was laid off from Revolt. Uh -huh. I was laid off from iHeart. Uh -huh. I was just trying to find my way. This mm -hmm. was the first time since I was 12 years old I didn't have a job. Right. I'm in a new city. I don't have no family here. Yeah. I have a son. It was really me trying to figure out what's next for me because I never had that that free time. I've always been working 12 hours a day, mm -hmm. eight hours a day. I never even had a free time to figure out what was next. Mm -hmm. you know. And when Jason asked me to be a part of this, I was just like, I'm with it because I knew podcasting and I knew what you guys were doing was super organic. The team you had was small, black run business. It just mm -hmm. felt like this is where I was supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. And you know, the content was a little different for me. Mm -hmm. I'm coming from strict structural radio, yeah. but at the same time, I never had an opportunity to speak my voice. Yeah. You know, you're always reading something or, you know, you're serving the people, which is fine, but I never got to give myself. Yeah. So me being on radio, I'm a little jealous watching the podcasters be able to say how they feel about something yeah. and have the, the time. Yeah. So, you know, when it's all said and done, man, it's just an amazing moment, you know, for us to be coming here today. It's just. And how amazing is it to get laid off from iHeart on a local show and <laughs> bounce back on a national program? I have to get into this, people. <laughs> I'm sit, I'm walking through New York. No, I'm going to give a shout out to Charlemagne the God. First, let's start with Charlemagne the Char. God. So you've known Charlemagne for a long time in the yeah. Breakfast Club. I've yeah. known Charlemagne for a long time. I went and All did. Of them. I yeah. went and did the Breakfast Club interview. The interview was. It, it felt really good. It in was the a room. really good interview. It, yeah. I had a great time. Yeah. They 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 shared their platform with me. I you've been on the Breakfast Club. Shout out to my girl Angela. I've enjoyed. The, I enjoyed the interview. Right after the interview, Charlemagne pulled me aside and said, "Bro." You need to be on the air. I'm like, well, I've been trying. Mm -hmm. What the fuck I got to, who I got to suck off to get a job? <sighs> That's not really what I said, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I was I available. I was available. He, it was was willing, he was also willing to It serve. was afternoon. Andy King's my hero. Yeah. You've watched the interview. <laughs> so he literally texted Doc Winters, the senior vice president of Urban over at iHeart and said, you need to do something with Jason. Mm -hmm. I left to dinner that night with Marissa Morris, who introduced me to Tom Pullman, who I didn't know at the time was the is the president of iHeart. Mm -hmm. We're having dinner, we're talking, and I had met Marissa at a Cardi B concert. So we had already developed an organic relationship mm -hmm. and she had become like my radio therapist where I'm like, girl, what am I gonna do? So next day I get a call from Jennifer Lineberger who was over at Premier Networks who syndicates shows and Doc and we were, I'm sitting in the park while I'm on a date with somebody, cute ass little nigga, <laughs> and he's, <laughs> Dominican. Nope. He's okay. sitting there just, you know, looking fine or whatever. And we're talking about the podcast and I'm explaining to them the dynamics, mm -hmm. what you do, what mm -hmm. you do. Mm -hmm. They already knew you. But in terms of like what this is, because what people watching don't realize is having an organic, vulnerable, open, transparent conversation as fluid as this may look at times is not an easy thing it's tough. because we're talking about our personal lives. We're talking about our friends. We're talking about people we run into at parties. We're talking about the wildest fantasy. We're talking about our darkest moments. And we do that because we have your support. I didn't think iHeart would like it, honestly, mm -hmm. but apparently it it had popped up on their radar and it was one something that in their research had become a really uh, a big thing for them to do. So for them to pick up the podcast, I was like, wow, this is crazy. Then they call back and say, we want to do a nationally syndicated show. Woo. What the hell you mean? With who? How, with us? With me? Okay. So we get into this whole conversation about what the podcast and what this national show looks like. So they say, okay, we wanna do Hollywood Unlocked with Jason Lee and the podcast. And so tell us what the podcast looks like. Oh, we know what the podcast looks like. Tell us what the, what the show looks like. Mm -hmm. The show looks like the podcast. Yeah. Because the three of us together have mm -hmm. something special. Mm -hmm. And I know I can't do radio if she ain't there because I feel like to be able to have that rich history where we can reach all the way back to some drama, dramatic shit or mm -hmm. an experience mm -hmm. is something that is just so rich and necessary, especially in the way radio today, as I feel, is somewhat watered down. Mm -hmm. So this show, Hollywood Unlock with Jason Lee and Melissa Ford and DJ Damage, now is going to be 50 markets across the entire country dream. on day one. Mm -hmm. It's a dream. So August 17th, if you're in Mississippi, I got a whole list. I, I could just sit here and read the Philly, fucking list. Mississippi, was it DC, Atlanta, Albany. Chicago. Columbus, Ohio. Somebody yeah. posted me in Columbus, Ohio today talking about they're excited we're coming. I said, we're gonna actually come to Columbus, Ohio. Let's go. We're in Beaumont, Texas. Beaumont? <laughs> yes. But Houston, Las yes. Vegas, San Francisco, yeah. I'm Northern California. I've actually emailed them my hometown radio uh, station. I said, I wanna be on that one too. 
because I want my people are so on Facebook happy for us. And I've seen all yeah. your fans and friends and family and yours too, very happy. So damage is the one that actually has slowed me down to say, are you enjoying yeah. Yeah. Smelling this, the roses. this process? Mm-hmm. Bruh. And I wasn't when you told me. This is a radio dream. Like this is all I've ever wanted to do was mm-hmm. radio. To be on a nationally syndicated show, it's like the Super Bowl. Like mm-hmm. that's what I'm like, you gotta understand. <laughs> We're at the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Like you gotta soak that in, bro. Mm-hmm. Like this, this doesn't happen every day, and you already know that. Yeah. You don't even have to listen to radio. That doesn't happen every day. Well, I will say to be able to have a show along the likes of Elvis Duran, uh, Brian Seacrest, Big Boy, uh, Steve Harvey, other greats All on greats. iHeart. But but to me, that when I saw that in the press release, I think the validation was, damn, we started this black foster kid who was shot. And wanted to kill herself at one point, and who lost everything, who everybody, even my mother said, "You ain't gonna be shit." Accomplish something. It was the validation. It was. It, it, it's definitely gonna be one of those moments in my career where I go, "That was validation that I mattered enough to survive, and that hard work really does pay off." Right. Always. So the people that listen and say, "Yo, man," like what I really am emotional about. I'm not gonna get emotional today because I've already been through that. I've had that moment yesterday in private. Mm-hmm, mm is all the people posting that, how surprised they are at how the dream came true. How the people have said, I've watched you guys start the show, or I've watched you start Hollywood Online, or I remember when you were a hot ass mess on Twitter, to go from that to where you are now. God bless you, we support you, we lift you up. And just the positivity and really being happy for us Mm -hmm. has felt good. Mm -hmm. There's been the fake phone calls and the, oh my God, I always knew you would do a thing. And that's cool too, like God bless all of you because and I had a good conversation with the owner of Shade Room and Ball Alert. Mm-hmm. And I said, bring it together. This could be my show, but it's our show. Mm-hmm. It's not our. It's, of course, it's our show. Mm-hmm. Black the media. Culture. Black media, black journalists, black people don't have national voices on politics, on pop culture, on what matters, because our voice don't always matter all the time. Mm-hmm. So to be able to have three black hosts, mm-hmm. a black publicist, black lawyers, b- black staff, to be able to Black have, as fuck. to be able to do all of that and provide and reach. Mm-hmm. And let me be clear, we're talking to everybody. I, I love the idea of us all being black, but being black and having pride in our blackness means making sure other people ha- understand mm-hmm. the pride and pull them into our pride mm-hmm. or our proud experience. So I just say that to, to you two, like, I'm excited as hell. We celebrated yesterday a little bit, and I haven't talked to you guys since, but I'm really happy that we're all here and that we're healthy and that we're focused and that our fans um, are excited for us as well. Thank you, fans. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Well, it's that time again, everybody. It's time for another Hollywood hookup. Yes, right. Okay, so I'm really loving this new deodorant that I've been using by Native. I'm actually wearing it right now. Uh, so like, am I. I'm serious, I'm really so am I. wearing it right now. So am I. I'm wearing the coconut uh, vanilla scented one. Mm-hmm. I have the eulicti- uh, U- look. eucalyptus. Eucalyptus mint. Look at that. Okay, so like I was saying to everybody, I'm really on this holistic health kick where I'm mm-hmm. very, very conscious of what I put on my body and in my body. Body and when should. and exactly and so when I found out about Native, I was really excited because it's formulated without aluminum, parabens, and talc. Okay, it's filled with ingredients found in nature, such as coconut oil, mm-hmm, and anti- which is antimicrobial. Okay, shea butter, which moisture, which is moisturizing and emollient, and you know tapioca. We- you know we love shea butter. We do love shea butter over here, yeah. And tapioca starch, which absorbs oh. wetness. Right. My mom used to feed me tapioca. I think. Uh, yeah. Oh, different, yeah. different, different tapioca. No, the ish, you know, okay. anyways, we're moving right it's along good for you. My mom gave it to me. I love the fact that there's no animal testing. Mm. Love that. Um, and there is free shipping and returns. Nice. So as you can see, we wear it consistently. It works. It does. Um, native can hang out with your workout, your busy mom life or 16 hour days. Um, there is over 8,000 five star reviews, so people love them. Um, they've been seen on everything from t- the Today Show and Women's Health magazines, Elle, Good Morning America, Pop Sugar, Nylon, Hello Giggles, and more. Mm. Um, the fewer ingredients, the simpler it is, which is something I really, really like. Um, I and you. aluminum has been linked to some serious health ramifications. Um, it's safe and effective, which I love. And love it's, there's something for everyone because I don't see you using the coconut. Vanilla one. I would use coconut vanilla and get my. Okay. 
on. But the eucalyptus mint, not really my jam. Real subtle yeah. smell, you know. I, I would think that that was the fresh. more, you know, the more masculine yeah, of the scents. Yeah, you know, a little mint. Yeah, so they've also got lavender rose and uh, cucumber and mint. I will try that cucumber and mint. That is fabulous with a vodka tonic as well. Um, <laughs> there's no risk to try. We off, uh, They offer free returns and exchanges in the USA. Subscribe and save 17%. That right is $2 per stick. Um, native, conveniently delivered to your door um, every one, two, three, or four months. One, two, three, four months. There it is. Yeah. So this is our offer for you guys. Um, there's Tell a about it. Yeah, there's a promo code. For your first 20% off your first purchase, visit nativedeodorant.com yes. and use the promo code UNLOCKED during the checkout. That is native, N-A-T-I-V-E, deodorant, D-E-O-D-O-R-A-N-T.com and use the code UNLOCKED to unlock your 20% off. That's your Hollywood hookup. That's right. So I have a question. Yeah. Uh, I saw this online. Okay. <laughs> so can we? We're, Are we going into hot topics? Well, I mean, I it's kind of not really a hot topic. It's just a question because okay. I, I, when I saw it online, I you know our friends over at um, Spiritual World follow you guys, love you guys. They are very big fans of they, Hollywood. They're Unlocked. very supportive. Yeah, they're very supportive. Um, and I saw this and I thought about you two. Mm. I don't know why, um, but I was curious what your answers would be. After sex, what do you say to? It says your partner, but in y your case, just whoever's the next to you. <laughs> Excuse I'm, me? <laughs> I'm sorry, I couldn't resist. But after sex, what do you say to your partner who you've just consummated with? I'm gonna get you a towel. Nice. Is that really what you say? Yeah. Well, first of all, it's rude because you're supposed to have a towel there. Um, no, nah, but you need a fresh one. No, but you get you have you don't it gotta have be a, fresh. You gotta rinse it with the nice warm water. Nice. It's, yeah. Put a little the, soap on it, a little really? half and half, a little dry, yes. a little wet. Oh my god! On, you now. ain't doing all that. Yes, I am. Oh, that's Talk amazing. You're such a gentleman. Thank if you. you've had sex with DJ Damage and had this towel experience, please send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do I say to some? You know, honestly, this is gonna sound so crazy. I do not have sex the way that I used to have sex. Not as much, not because. Okay, when you have sex, okay. what's the first thing you say afterwards? Like, get me a sandwich. Your Uber's here. No, okay. no, 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 I'm just playing. No. <laughs> um, no, I mean, you know, like, I have a very small group of people that I'm involved with right now. And typically, when we're involved, we're actually spending a weekend or a week together. So uh -huh. it's like, you know what I mean? It could be, where's the weed? It could be, uh, give me a towel. It could be. Good night. Good night. Got to go to the show. Okay, somebody uh, take my dick out, you like, I, I can't do it no more. I was reading the comments, and somebody <laughs> said, um, "One guy said I ask for feedback regarding my performance." Whack. Oh, that's just dumb. That's lame. I'll tell you how you know if you're doing whack. Okay, let me first start. I'm so happy to be on iHeart. <laughs> I'm so happy that iHeart told me I don't have to change. Because honestly, this would make this not fun. Mm. It would make it not fun to not be me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Feedback what? on oh, the performance. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> if they don't swallow, they know you ain't shit. Like, <laughs> they know your diet ain't shit. They know your STD rate is probably a little crazy, or your STD status. If they ain't swallowing, Look, that's an indication that they really don't like you. Look, fellas, after sex, right? Lay your head on her chest. If her heart isn't beating fast, you ain't do shit. Mm. That's real. She was just sitting there in a the calm, watching TV. Why you were sweating it out? So this, this guy just showed me a picture of this girl that he had. Well, he showed me first. He showed me a video of a girl he had. He banged out. Then he showed me a picture of her afterwards, and she was laying there looking like it would look like a crime scene, like she had been killed, and there was like nut all over her back and on her ass. And I just said to Who him, like, this he, why did he show you? this what? to you? The well, fuck? We, we were laying in bed. Come on, mind your business. But the point is, <laughs> okay. The what? point. The point is, we were looking at this photo, and I'm just like. Wow, like she let you take a picture of her like laying there dead with like I mean if there'd just been chalk around her and a yellow tape, she was crying. It well was maybe crying. she didn't know the picture was being she taken. Knew she, she, knew. she was she was smiling. She so she, yeah, she was I don't bad. know what I would do if a guy asked <laughs> about his performance right after. How do you rate him? It would be like if you don't know, then there's a problem because I'm pretty obvious. No, I think I think everybody wants to know. Like, you know, did I hit at least two out of three or four of the walls? 
If I don't say thank you Four afterwards, how then you walls, sucked. Wait, how many walls does a woman have? <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> you really don't know? I don't know. It's been so long, but I will tell you, I had sex with this person one time, and I remember, I, I, well, never mind, I'm not going to tell the story. I had, it, <laughs> they didn't have no walls leaving that house, because I was knocking everything out. I was trying to literally, I think I was trying to like see my penis come out their mouth or something. My virgin know. ears, oh, okay? Please, ain't nothing right on you, now, virgin. Jesus Christ. Traffic. I don't, uh, fuck you. <laughs> I fucking no can't, tease. I can't stand <laughs> him. Me and, I fucking me and Melissa him. texted when I said traffic. I honestly don't know where that bullshit came from because she don't have sex like that. But it's the funniest clip that I still go back and watch <laughs> to this day. I texted to her and I was I'm laughing right now. <laughs> no, no. So how do you rate the performance? Um, how do I rate... Um, Most, you're do you do it by category? What do you yeah, say? Yeah, yeah, you do okay, categories? let's go back. Let's my, go back. my words? Yes. Thank you. That's it? I That's say, it? well, I mean... I so you show gratitude after you have sex? Yeah. <laughs> are you a person that need to have sex for a long time, or are you like a nice, short good time it depends i'm 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 i don't mm. necessarily need a marathon all the yeah, time yeah, yeah. you know so i'm i'm I, I consider you know timing like okay if you were having sex with a man and he was holding you by your braids and a braid came out would you be mad oh sh <laughs> that's actually happening <laughs> <laughs> does he hand it to you or does he no like, it's just it's just grabbing that. grab another just, one just, just throw that shit on the floor <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was in the front. It was like, you know, like it was baby hair type. Anyways, it doesn't even matter. I say thank you because, you know, for me, sometimes sex is a stress reliever. Mm. And I'm, I am very thankful that mm -hmm. you relieved my stress. <laughs> so you say thank you. I say thank you. But that's like what, what you say to the lunch lady after she gave you an extra grapefruit. I'd say thank you a little bit different <laughs> extra, to the lunch lady. You know, I say thank you. <laughs> I say thank you. I say you say thank you to God too. <gasps> you know, one time I was having sex and I was, I was. Uh, you thank God? No, I would. I was, I was smoked out, so I was like super duper high. Oh my God! If you have not had sex like weed, like on mm -hmm. weed, please do it. My God, I, I swear, I felt like I was talking to God while what? I was having an orgasm. It was the greatest feeling ever. I don't know why anybody even bothers doing hard drugs. Weed is where it's at. Like, that's were just, you doing the work or the guy was doing the work? Um, I was doing the work, uh, okay. but I didn't mind. Well, enough, enough about Melissa Ford's work. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> okay, so look, Naomi Campbell. Okay, but before we get into hot topics, again, one more time to all of you watching the show. Please make sure you're telling your friends. Make sure you're sharing on Facebook and social. You're going to start seeing a lot of content come out from us. If you are in one of the fifty markets that we, we, we were that 55. we five. Well, I think it's 50 or 55. It's somewhere between 50 and 55, and mm -hmm. we'll grow. Please make sure that you're listening and tuning in and interacting. We will get to as many cities as we can. Mm -hmm. I'll be in, well, by the time you watch this, I will have been in Miami. So shout out to you, Miami and New York. And uh, I'm just excited, man. Thank you, iHeart, for trusting us and giving us a chance. Yes. And right now we are on weekends. So you check the weekend schedule, <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays, and wherever these markets are. Uh, we will still do our podcast. We will still upload to, uh, YouTube. Mm-hmm. We will still be uncensored in here. Mm -hmm. And look, if celebrities don't come on the show, they're hiding something, they're liars, <laughs> the or they're frauds. <laughs> because this is a show where if you can come in and have a transparent, open conversation, you're going to be great. Right. Like, just be, just keep it 1,000. Mm -hmm. If you're a rapper and you said to keep 100, nigga, then keep it 100. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's hilarious. I just hear it. That's how rappers talk in my head. Well, nigga, you keep it 100, nigga. Yeah. All right. Uh, all right. So, look, let's get into some hot topics. What's going Do on? It. Naomi okay. Campbell. So, Naomi Campbell claims that she was blocked from entering a French hotel because she's black. Uh, mm. Naomi Campbell claims that she was barred from entering a hotel in the south of France recently simply because of the color of her skin. Uh, the outspoken supermodel spoke with Paris Match Magazine and shared the unfortunate ordeal. She explained that she and a friend tried to attend a party at the unnamed hotel but was blocked from entering by door staff despite an invite. I'm surprised she didn't blow up their spot. This unnamed hotel, that's that... That doesn't seem like Naomi. Paid her. She says they did not want to let my friend and I in because of the color of my skin. The guy at the entrance pretended that the place was full, but he was letting other people in. It is the, uh, for these kinds of revolting moments that I will continue to speak up and make myself heard. Has she been um, a part of that movement? 
Uh, what, what, what movement? Just um, in terms, <laughs> exactly. No, like in terms of, uh, I've never heard of her having an, a single solitary experience when it came to colorism. I mean, I'll say this: Naomi Campbell's well traveled. She, I mean, she's like the niece of Nelson Mandela, so she has to have ties to Africa. She's she's in Nigeria all the time with this guy. She's allegedly dating now. <laughs> You're not paying attention. She was dating this billionaire over in Russia. She's well traveled. She my, was. My, yes. My point being is, being a supermodel, having grown up in the industry in the 80s and 90s and traveling the world, I'm sure she's endured racism. Mm -hmm. Even just because you're Naomi Campbell, they, you're still black. Right. Sometimes your blackness will scare you more. Don't matter who you are. Okay, but she's Naomi Campbell. Does not matter. And this is the South Oprah of Winfrey was in Switzerland and the girl told her, bitch, you can't get this bag. I don't give, she didn't know who she was. Mm -hmm. She just treated her like, you black, mm -hmm. that bag's too expensive. Get that little cheap bag over there. I mean, it's a whole thing on YouTube. I watched it like 20 times. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. But one thing I would do love is that she had uh, the courage to speak up and talk about it. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I don't want to be the I don't want to be the one who says that she didn't experience what she says she experienced. So if she did, well, then my sympathy is with her because that's a that's a really unfortunate feeling to you know make somebody have to kind of go through. She's probably not used to being denied entry. Too. That part too. That probably really fucked her up. Like, yeah, that part too. What do you mean I can't come in? You know, but, but right. we're full. No, but let's like, like, let's <laughs> keep full. it real. There have been uh, there have been numerous reports that Naomi, you know, has some anger issues. She really do not get anywhere everybody, close to her with a phone. Everybody, that was years ago. We not going to do that to Naomi. Okay. I met Naomi at Mark Jacobs' wedding. She was so nice and sweet. I was afraid to ask her for a photo because of what I had heard in the past. People mm -hmm. hear things about me that are definitely true. But, I mean, she was sweet. Okay, so you don't think that this was a situation where her attitude might have gotten gotten her in trouble and it was what she says and well, she was racially well, charged situation? Well, I'll tell you this. Charge situation. When I saw Naomi, I can only say me mm -hmm. because there are reports about you. There's reports about me. I don't no. know if there's reports about you, but there will be at some point mm -hmm. where people say, oh, he's an elitist or she's an elitist or he's an elitist. I Let never me, get that. Well, I've definitely been confronted with I think I'm too good because I don't want to talk to somebody. If Naomi Campbell walks in the room and you know who she is, you should honor her like the queen she is and you should give her what the fuck she wants. If there ain't a table, nigga, go build a table. I'm sure there was a lamp sitting on a table. I'm sure there was a flower pot sitting on a table. There are some establishments, no matter who you are, and especially if you're a Naomi Campbell, where they make it a point to treat you like shit to let you know you ain't better than their establishment. Mm -hmm. well, I've been at those places. I just kind of find it interesting that the hotel is unnamed. Yeah. Like if she's going, if she's going to make um, you know, if she's gonna bring attention to what happened, yeah. then just put them on full but on blast. Is it the hotel's party or was it a party just at the hotel? Wait, Therefore, she, you don't have to name the hotel. And if she puts them on blast, then she's being the Naomi Campbell that throws the phone. Sometimes you lend your voice to issues that happen to black people. I'm telling you right now, I'm having an inner conflict over why I didn't do anything about the police that violated me in front of my own building. Mm -hmm. Right. Like I just got texted a message the other day that the police are really investigate that like the, the police officer are on uh, administrative leave and they're being investigated. And I feel like, damn, and I didn't even try to do anything. So I'm going to say, I'm going to side with Naomi Campbell on this one. Naomi, call me up, girl. Tell me where it was. I'm going to fly there. Yeah, We're going to we roll in. We're going to be playing Tupac. I'm going to put a bandana on and I'm going to be everything they think I oh, am. Okay. What? Okay. I can have a bandana. <laughs> yeah, I got that you. Naomi bandana. Let's right. roll up. Moving right along. So a Chicago mother has been accused of stealing Taraji P. Henson's uh -oh. identity. Jesus. Did she steal Taraji or cookies? She Taraji. <laughs> she is Taraji. Um, so Taraji has had the unfortunate... Um, uh, situation happen where she's been a victim of identity theft. Mm -hmm. A Chicago woman is being held accountable for not only stealing the Empire Star's personal information, but also several other people's identities. Damn. Um, it was said that 29 year old pregnant mother of six, Jesus lady, I'm sorry. Okay, Alicia Newby appeared at a court hearing on Sunday where prosecutors accused her of collecting thousands of dollars in merchandise mailed to dummy addresses. Uh, she was hit with felony charges of continuing a financial crime enterprise. Ooh, girl. Mm, mm, mm. After she allegedly allegedly racked up in excess of $12,000 in fraudulent charges, including more than $4,000 uh, that was canceled after Henson's manager noticed the bogus transactions last year. Mm. Um, authorities shout, shout out to the scammers. 
Uh, Why are we sh- like it's scamming is like a cool thing now. Like a lot of people are shouting out scammers. You are from cool. fi- excuse me. She's from Toronto. Toronto. <laughs> You're yes. from Philly. I'm from the Bay. Yeah, Nigga, but home I- of the scammers. No, it's <laughs> shout out to the scammers. Listen, let me tell you. If I didn't have a job, you be scamming. And I didn't have Hollywood unlocked. And I didn't have. And I just had six kids. And I could come up real quick cookie going down maybe but how do you get to Raji's info like I could see how you could scam somebody like me like you know I probably swipe my shit the wrong place to Raji how do you, you get her so- you didn't see the hacker that just hacked a hundred million people's information out of Equifax oh no, no. Ca- capital, capital one. One. one yeah on top of Equifax yeah Sally May needs to be hacked look let me tell you so- let me <laughs> tell you guys hell? something let me tell you let me tell you guys something to watch out for too there was one time where I used one of those you know rinky dink um ATM machines oh, somewhere card? oh no <laughs> Sorry. Oh, no, sorry. Remember um, that nigga's card didn't work and everybody's rent couldn't be paid because he had <laughs> fucked up the card. Oh my god, that was. <laughs> and then he bounced over to Thai, where he's in Bali. In Bali. Why he go to Bali? Non extradition. Why? <laughs> Why is he there? Why is he extradition for what? Well, he's been accused of sexual assault. Mm. So you were saying the bank. anyway. So I was saying so you know those little rinky dink you know uh, the ATM ATMs exactly corner. exactly. Be very, very, very careful when you use your card in one of those. D- use a bank, even if it's a three dollar charge, because it's not your bank. Use a bank e- ATM because though sometimes people put some kind of spyware or some kind of copying, mm-hmm. you know, technology in there. My card was uh, was copied, and so I started getting charges in a totally different city that I wasn't in. So it was easy for me to prove, that, and the money was coming out of my account, but it was easy for me to prove that this was not me making these charges. And so they reimbursed me, but just be very careful because those those machines are easy to manipulate. Anyways, um, authorities did not say if Newbie and Henson had any connection, but a police source said the investigators were going to look into whether any other cast members of Empire have been victims. Maybe she was just rooting around in the trash Where by was the Jesse studios. Where Smollett? Because I'm telling you, I think he has something to do with this. Mm-hmm. And then he... <laughs> And then he comes out and says that he didn't do it, that uh, Jamal Lyons did. That nigga did it. Okay. Well, she. <laughs> Maybe was, it was Cookie's cards. I don't know. Maybe this girl served time with Cookie. I don't know. She, uh, <laughs> she's also accused of defrauding J.P. Morgan Chase, American Express, PayPal, along with several other companies. She's, she's a, in this she's expert. She's, she's a super. Sca- is she from Oakland? Um, no, I don't. She's from no, Chicago. She's from the shy. She's from Chicago. But she oh, do oh, this, oh, do oh. this. I already know what happened. What she's happened? Got if she's from Chicago. Uh huh. She was walking down the street after a Cookie got off the train. Mm. <laughs> what happened? Oh my God! Don't. She tied her up with a noose, and then threw bleach on her. And took her credit cards. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Anyway, listen, we ran out of time. People, look, we love you. We wanted to get into more hot topics. This was the Gratitude Show. We are happy to be at iHeart. Thank I you. I am happy to be here serving. <laughs> Scratch that. I don't serve nobody. Uh, <laughs> spending time with both of you. Yes. Uh, thank you for putting up with all our craziness. And look. I will do better. I will be better. She will do better. He will. She's going to stop saying, uh. Um. <laughs> um. I'm going to stop interrupting. Mm. Yeah, right. No, I'm going to stop interrupting. <laughs> um, and Damage is going to talk more, even though I feel like you talk a lot. I try. I think you do. Both of y'all talk a lot. So I just try to, you know, She talks balance. way more than I do. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> anyway, but we love all of you. Thank you for supporting the show. Stay with us. Grow with us. Our day ones, you matter the most. Mm. Um, and those of you who don't like me, I don't like y'all either, really. But anyway, have a good night. <laughs> Later. Bye, everybody.